following an incident several days ago in which a suspected drone launched from Lebanon struck his private residence. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu appears to be taking extra precautions. Understandably, he has no desire to repeat this near-nightmare experience and has called for heightened security measures around his home. Netanyahu has instructed his team to bolster security immediately by adding air defense systems around his residence to counter similar attacks, whether from drones or long-range missiles. Additionally, he has requested the installation of a GPS jammer, a device designed to scramble the signals typically used to guide drones, as a further measure to prevent future strikes. Though local media reported that the damage to his private residence was relatively minor, for Hezbollah, the primary suspect behind the drone attack, this incident served as a message. It's a clear statement of Hezbollah's presence, signaling that they are positioned alarmingly close to Israel's defense perimeter. This kind of psychological warfare, or psi war, is intended to remind Israel of Hezbollah's ability to strike at high-value targets. <laughs> Given the intensity of such a direct threat, it's understandable that Netanyahu might be rattled, even to the point of looking for an alternative residence as a safe house. Moving from his current location in Caesarea, which has likely been identified by Hezbollah as a primary target, is a precaution that Netanyahu is reportedly considering seriously. The horrific assassination attempt on the life of President Donald Trump. This wasn't just... While it's reasonable for a prime minister to reinforce layers of security around his home, the question remains. Will doubling down on air defense systems effectively reduce the risk of similar attacks? Even if Israel relies on the Iron Dome, which is often touted as one of the best air defense systems globally, there's a valid question about whether its reputation holds up under such specific threats. In the case of defending a single individual, especially against drones, which are increasingly difficult to detect and intercept, is the Iron Dome truly sufficient to protect the Prime Minister's life? This concern has sparked discussions about the real limits of advanced defense systems when it comes to thwarting unconventional and close-range attacks. Yes, or perhaps not. The Iron Dome's widely recognized name is undoubtedly one of the most celebrated achievements in military technology, developed by Raphael Advanced Defense Systems in collaboration with Israel Aerospace Industries. However, regardless of the extensive praise and coverage, especially from Western media, that sometimes goes as far as glorifying its capabilities beyond practical limits, one critical fact remains that can effectively challenge the claims presenting this system as flawlessly invincible. This key reality highlights that the Iron Dome, for all its accolades, is not without significant limitations. Indeed, about a year ago, we saw this $50 million Iron Dome system, which still incurs a high operational cost of around $100,000 to $150,000 per interception, fail against a massive volley of homemade rockets fired from Gaza on October 7, 2023. Just consider this, a staggering 5,000 rockets, yes, 5,000, were launched from Gaza within a mere 20-minute window, creating an overwhelming assault that rained down relentlessly on Israel's major cities. Since that event, it's likely that Netanyahu's nights have been far from restful, with the relentless reality of that breach still casting a shadow over Israel's defenses. Though local media sources sometimes avoid disclosing all the data that might paint Israel in a less secure light, the fact that around 2,200 rockets successfully breached the Iron Dome's defenses is not a figure that reflects well on the system's reputation. This incident has left Israel grappling with the public exposure of vulnerabilities 
in a defense system they had proudly touted as among the world's best. The embarrassment is clear, as the Iron Dome's celebrated reliability has now been visibly questioned. The Iron Dome spec sheet boasts a 90% interception rate, a claim that seems optimistic, though not entirely unexpected. Nations and defense contractors often emphasize the most competitive aspects of their products to attract interest and investment, and the Iron Dome is no exception to this rule. However, the stark contrast between the system's projected reliability and its real-world challenges in facing low-cost, unconventional rocket attacks highlights a reality that undermines its reputation, presenting a humbling reminder of the system's limitations in an increasingly complex defense landscape. However, these statistics seem to fall apart when faced with the reality of thousands of rockets bypassing the Iron Dome each costing only between $300 to $800 to launch. In other words, the Iron Dome requires a budget 125 to 500 times higher to intercept these so-called cheap rockets. And that doesn't even take into account the $50 million price tag for each Iron Dome battery, nor the $2.6 billion in research funding, much of which was provided by the United States. Despite this track record, both the Israel Defense Forces and the Israeli Ministry of Defense remain firm in their stance, claiming they can neutralize every incoming aerial threat as if it were nothing more than a nuisance. This significant vulnerability has not gone unnoticed by other groups, especially Hezbollah, which has emerged as one of Israel's most formidable adversaries on the battlefield. They understand that war is far from cheap for Western nations, even those with massive defense budgets. Hezbollah claims to have unleashed a barrage of rockets on northern and central Israel using their own manufactured arsenal. Geopolitical analysts have interpreted this as a deliberate tactic aimed at exhausting the Iron Dome. By targeting central areas like military bases and other essential facilities, Hezbollah ensures that the IDF cannot simply ignore these rockets or let them land unchecked. Several rockets have even been directed at Iron Dome batteries themselves, posing an even greater risk if they were to successfully strike their intended targets. With Hezbollah's calculated and structured strategy, Israel now faces a difficult crossroads. On one side, there's the prospect of burning through millions of dollars each day to intercept the rockets. On the other, the risk of letting them fall where they may, potentially endangering Iron Dome batteries, or worse, Israeli military bases. Each decision brings its own set of challenges leaving Israel to weigh costly defensive measures against potentially devastating outcomes if key facilities were to be hit. However, as usual, Israel has devised what some might call a somewhat cunning strategy. When mapped out, it becomes evident that Israel's critical military installations are located in areas densely surrounded by civilian life. The media often refers to this setup as a human shield or live shield. If Hezbollah were to target these key sites, it would likely result in civilian casualties due to the destructive nature of the attacks, creating a moral and strategic dilemma. Every day, Hezbollah militants continue their steady assault on northern Israel, with reports suggesting that the frequency of these attacks is only growing. Hezbollah, positioning itself as part of the axis of resistance, has stepped up its offensive, causing increasing damage to public infrastructure and facilities. Hezbollah has become a frequent topic in major media, especially regarding its recent tactics that expose vulnerabilities in the Iron Dome. Rather than evading it, 
Hezbollah has directly targeted the Iron Dome air defense systems themselves, exposing the system to embarrassment as it struggles to counter low-cost, low-tech weaponry from a militant group. Due to Israel's reluctance to reevaluate the performance of the Iron Dome, the system once again revealed its shortcomings when facing Houthi drones launched from Yemen. The failure to detect Houthi drones over Tel Aviv has further shaken public confidence in the Iron Dome's effectiveness, casting doubt on the reliability of this once lauded system. Professor Ted Postel, a missile technology expert from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, has also raised concerns about the Iron Dome's efficacy against aerial attacks from Iran's regional proxies. According to him, Israel's air defense system may not be nearly as reliable as it appears. He even suggested that the Iron Dome's success rate during the November 2012 conflict between Israel and Hamas might have been as low as 5% or even lower. This raises a critical question how did U.S. defense consultants arrive at a 90% effectiveness rating for the Iron Dome? Professor Postel also noted that one of the critical factors contributing to the Iron Dome's failure in intercepting aerial attacks from Iran's proxies is its lack of flexibility. As we know, the Iron Dome is designed to intercept incoming threats when they approach directly from the front. Unfortunately, Professor Postel found that missiles frequently approach from the side, a serious vulnerability for the Iron Dome system. Additionally, attacks from behind further reduce the effectiveness of this air defense system, revealing a limitation that hinders its ability to respond to multi-directional threats. Moreover, based on numerous cases highlighting the Iron Dome's inability to handle certain aerial attacks, Weapons experts have begun to speculate about its weaknesses. Several specialists have discovered that drones created by Hezbollah, as well as those used by the Houthis, are specifically engineered to fly at lower altitudes and generate minimal heat. This design makes it challenging for the radar systems within Israel's entire air defense network, including the Iron Dome, to track and intercept them. So. Why is radar interception such a crucial component for the Iron Dome in countering aerial threats from Hezbollah? As we've learned, air defense systems rely heavily on the radar's ability to detect and intercept incoming threats. If the sensitivity of the radar's interception capability decreases, the air defense system risks a delay in responding to attacks. This vulnerability creates an opening that militant groups in the Middle East have effectively exploited highlighting a weakness in the Iron Dome that can be manipulated by these groups to evade interception 